Hi everybody. We are going to start our next unit called energy. So we are going to be working on right now, unit two, lesson one, intro to energy. And the essential question is, what is energy? So the standards that we're going to be covering are S8P2, science eighth grade physical science two and we are going to be doing b and c one a is where we're talking about kinetic and potential energy and then c is where we're talking about ch those energy changes when energy changes one form to another so you're going to start out with an engaged brain on page 117 you have four questions in which you are going to check either true or false. Question two asks you to describe and um, to write a caption about what is going on in the image of the marching band in terms of sound energy. Question three wants you to read the example sentence. And then using the context clues in the sentence, come up with a definition of the law of conservation of energy. The first part of lesson one is called Get Energized, and it's on pages 118 to 119. The essential questions in this section are, what are two types of energy? And can objects have potential and kinetic energy at the same time? So energy is the ability to cause change. And of course, everybody describes Bill Nye as having a lot of energy. There's different types of energy, um, from mechanical to nuclear to chemical to potential to thermal to electromagnetic. Don't get overwhelmed by the so slide. We're gonna go over the ones that you need to know. So the first thing we need to talk about is that there's a difference between kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And potential energy, you can think of that as stored energy. So when the ball is on the top of the hill, and there's actually a point where it will stop, there it has zero kinetic energy, but a lot of potential energy it has the potential to roll down the hill due to the force of gravity. It's not going to um, roll on its own. Gravity pulls it to the earth. So it has that potential energy versus kinetic energy. As it's going up the hill, it's losing kinetic energy. And then as it's going down the hill, it's gaining kinetic, kinetic energy. So here the um, robots are stretching out a rubber band and the rubber band has <laughs> potential energy in the form of the elasticity in the rubber band. And then when the purple robot comes and cuts the rubber band, it releases that stretch. And then we have the movement of that rubber band being snapped back, which is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is related to two things, the mass of the object and the speed of the object. Velocity is just simply what speed are you going and in what direction. If you change direction, you change your velocity. If you slow down, you change your velocity. If you speed up, you change your velocity. So two things that kinetic energy is dependent on, mass and how fast you're going. A beach ball um, rolling down the sidewalk will have less kinetic energy than a 15-pound bowling ball rolling down the same sidewalk. Remember that you can break down a lot of scientific words into their prefixes and suffixes and root words. And so here you can say that kinesis means motion. So that should help you remember kinetic energy. In the mathematical formula, you have Ke as the kinetic energy, m as the mass of the object, and v as the velocity. Speed is the change of an object's 
over time. We'll be looking at triangles like this as we go along. Um, here we have kinetic energy, the mass, the velocity, and the SI unit of energy is the joule. So when you see J, it's referring to energy. So again, potential energy. It can be because the object is raised higher and if it if it's let go, it will have kinetic energy then. It could be it trapped in chemical bonds in a molecule, that those bonds are holding potential energy. And if those bonds are broken, energy is released. So here are some types of potential energy. You have gravitational potential energy, electrical potential energy chemical potential energy, elastic potential energy, and nuclear potential energy. So gravity, if you hold a ball up above your head, it has potential energy, because if you drop it, the earth is going to pull it back to earth. So it has potential energy when you're holding it above your head, and when you let go of it, that changes to kinetic energy. Elastic energy, that if you remember the two little robots pulling the rubber band. So if they were just holding it stretched out, that rubber band has potential energy. As soon as they let go or break the rubber band, that potential energy gets transformed into kinetic energy. So here we are, question number five. Question number five is an active reading question. And they ask you to underline the factors that affect an object's kinetic and potential energy. So you have something to underline on this page and something to underline on the next page. So make sure you read through the example of the skater at the skate park and understand when does the skater have more potential energy, when does the skater have no potential energy, and when when is the scenario where they're losing kinetic energy and whether when they're losing kinetic energy and when they're gaining kinetic energy number six I ask you to think of another situation that shows kinetic and potential energy and i have a handout for you to put this on and we will be turning that in it'll be part of this lesson this lessons module or part of this lesson so make sure you pick that up. Don't forget that you need to put your first and last name, period, and alpha number on your paper. So this should actually say number seven, sorry. Um, number seven asks you, do you think that the skater has any gravitational potential energy at point C. And so you kind of have to put the two pages together to see point C, but point C is in the middle of the skate ramp. You also have to give evidence to support your claim. 